This is part two of the video that's uh, doing a simple example of a convolution, actually computing a convolution. In the previous video, we convolved h of t with u of t. And in this video, we're going to convolve u of t with h of t. Now, I've already made the claim that uh, convolution is a commutative operator, so we should get the same answer, and hopefully we will. Um, to do this, let's actually first write out the convolution integral. It's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of u of tau h of t minus tau d tau. So again, in order to work this out, you have to remember that the variable of integration here is tau, and t is a parameter that doesn't come into the integration. So by the time we complete the integration, we'll have something that's a function of t, because we will have integrated all the tau's out. Okay, and so this also means that we need to um, we need to pay attention to what the value of t is, because the value of t is going to change uh, what our um, what our limits of integration will be in this case. So again, to do this integral. We graph both u and h as a function of tau. Okay, so u of tau is easy. It's zero for values of tau less than zero, and one for values of tau greater than zero. H of t minus tau is going to look like this for some value t, and we'll assume now that t is greater than zero. Uh, we'll work the case where t is less than 0 in just a minute. It's basically, well, here before we draw this, let's actually just show what happens when you get, or to get h of t minus tau. So we start off with h of t that looks like this. The first thing we do is we flip h of t. Uh, let's see, we'll do it in this ugly green color. So we flipped it about the line t is equal to 0, and then we shift to the right by a value of t. So we get something over here where this is t, and that's what our signal looks like. So we've taken the original signal, flipped it about the line t is equal to 0, and then shifted it to the right by t to get the final um, signal. So basically this h of t minus tau is going to look something like this. Okay, so what we need to do then is multiply u of tau by h of t minus tau, and when we do that, we see immediately that um, for values of tau greater than t, h of t minus tau is 0, so we're going to have h of uh, t minus tau times u of tau equal to 0. And for values of tau less than 0, u of tau is 0. So we're going to have a value of 0 for all values of tau less than 0. And between 0 and t, the product of u of tau, which is 1, this guy up here is 1, and our uh, flipped and shifted e to the minus a t is just going to be the flipped and shifted e to the, uh, it's going to just be this thing. Okay, so basically what I need to do now is get the area under this part of the graph. Okay. So my limits of integration here are going to be tau is equal to 0 to t. And so all I need to do now is just uh, plug in this uh, product and integrate from 0 to t. So if I do that, it's going to look like this. The integral from 0 to t, u of tau is 1 in this, point, in this part of the, the graph. h of t minus tau is e to the minus a t minus tau, okay, 
That's the one tricky bit here, is you need to remember that we're integrating h of t minus tau. So everywhere there's a t here, you have to replace it by t minus tau. So here I take t and replace it by t minus tau here. And then that's d tau. Okay. So far, so good, hopefully. Um, if we work this integral, uh, we have an e to the minus a t. Again, t is a constant with respect to our integral of our variable of integration tau. So I can write this as e to the minus a t integral from 0 to t e to the a tau because the negative a times the negative tau gives me a positive a tau d tau. And I can work out this integral. Uh, let's see. I'll get rid of some of this stuff up here. Although I have to say I like that color scheme better. So this guy now becomes e to the minus a t. And working this integral, I get e, or I get a 1 over a, e to the a t minus 1. And when I multiply these guys out, I get 1 over a. Uh, the e to the minus a t times e to the a t is 1 minus e to the minus a t. Okay. And that's what I get when I work out the integral that gives me the area under, under this uh, uh, part of the graph. Okay, so again, we've assumed here this t is greater than 0. So now we need to do the case when t is less than 0. So I'll erase this all. Well. Actually, I don't know if I'll erase it. Things don't seem to be erasing anymore. Huh, I've broken things. Well, without erasing stuff, uh, let me just say what happens here. Uh, for values of t less than 0, the non-zero parts of u of tau and h of t minus tau don't overlap, and so the uh, integral is uh, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 0, which is 0. So this then basically um, describes the final result that uh, uh, this convolution, this convolution here, is um, equal to 1 over a times 1 minus e to the minus at when t is greater than 0 and 0 when t is less than 0. If you compare this to the result that we got in part 1, you'll see that they're the same, which lends some hope to the idea that we're not just completely uh, out in left field here. So with that, we'll conclude this example. Hopefully it's been useful. Uh, you can see now why people consider the ability to do convolutions in the time domain as uh, something uh, rather macho, because it's fairly straightforward once you figure out what you're doing, but it's not always clear what you're doing. Um, so we'll leave it at that.